Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Chief Lego Fanatic. Today we're going to be doing an in-depth review and look at at set number 10294, RMS Titanic. Everything is awesome. Alright, so we have set 10294, the RMS Titanic. It's 9,090 pieces. Uh, retails for $629.99 or no, $630, uh, which gives it a relatively low price per piece, if you, especially if you compare it to other sets um, like the um, uh, UCS Millennium Falcon, which is around 7,500 pieces and it retails for $800. Um, it is 54 inches long. So it makes it the longest set that Lego has ever produced. Um, seven inches wide and then 18 inches tall. Uh, that takes it from the base up to the top of the, the flag staffs on the top of the mass, um, which is three or four inches above the actual top of the smokestacks. Uh, the set is long, to say the least. Um, let's, uh, let's compare it to some other sets and see what it looks like. All right, so what we have here is what was previously the longest set in my collection uh, is the Ultimate Collector Series uh, Super Star Destroyer. Uh, it is uh, about two and a half inches uh, shorter than the Titanic. Uh, so <laughs> to say this set is really long is a pretty gross understatement. Uh, this set itself is really long. It's um, about four feet long. Takes up a lot of space on my shelves. Uh, I'll do a more in-depth video on it later. All right, let's uh, let's break this set down into the individual pieces, and uh, I'll show you what the inside looks like. All right, so this is the ship broken down into its three distinct sections. Uh, lengthwise, the center portion of the ship is the shortest. Uh, the bow is the middle, and then the aftermost section of the ship is the longest. Uh, one of the neat things that LEGO did really well when they designed this is the actual connections between the ship. Um, for a, a uh, set this long, um, if you could probably imagine it's really hard to pick up uh, that it wouldn't hold together very well. Uh, but one of the things that they did was, uh, I don't know how well you can see, but they have these pieces here that all have holes in them. And they actually match up with uh, pieces in this section and with that section uh, that also have holes in them. And, and they have these little pins uh, that stick down into them, and that's what's actually holding the uh, individual sections together. And they're very well um, uh, disguised. Um, they, it fits in well with the set. Uh, for this one here, you can see how it slides straight in. Um, it doesn't actually go all the way, all the way down. Uh, there's a section on this section of the ship that actually holds it up so that it is flush with the deck. But you can see how that could easily be um, disguised and how it holds the, the two sections together. That was extremely well done. So it makes it very easy to pick up the set and uh, not worry about it falling apart uh, one way or the other. All right, so we'll start with the, the actual bow of the ship. Uh, they, they, did, they did very well with the details. Uh, aside from the two flagstaffs, uh, the mast, you can actually see the two anchors uh, what's really well done with the anchors is they're actually, uh, in the other sets, these pieces are used as hot dogs. Uh, so it's a good parts usage. Um, they are connected to the chains that actually run up onto the deck. On the deck itself, it has these uh, cargo um, cranes uh, along with openings in the deck that allowed, allows for uh, lowering cargo down into storage rooms. Um, these pieces here that they use for the ladders going up and off of deck, uh, for a lot of other sets, especially like Star Wars sets, these are basically, basically vents. So it's showing how well LEGO does with their parts usage. Uh, a part that the Navy and me get really geeks out on is the green and the red. It, for people who don't know much about sailing, uh, it may seem odd to have two random colors there. But what they're used for in sailing is that um, the green is on the starboard side and the red is on the port side. So if you see the ship at night, you can tell one, what side of the ship that you're approaching and which direction the ship is traveling so you can uh, act accordingly if you're going to hit them. Another neat detail 
that they add are the lifeboats on the sides and then in the back. And I'm going to move this closer so you can actually see it. But on the back here, one, you can see the, the, um, the boilers um, for producing steam. And then in the lower sections here, these are actually the interior section. So you can see the, the different passageways, the columns. I believe this is supposed to be a pool. Um, you can see the different colors for the uh, tiling and whatnot. Um, here you can see different tables for the dining rooms. Um, there's a compass here. So there's a lot of neat detail showing the inside. Um, you have the, the colonnade walk along the side. The windows here uh, for the um, staterooms. The bridge. Uh, there's a lot of really good detail. Um, another like parts usage one, these little pieces here uh, that are yellow that are used for these smokestacks are the same pieces that Lego uses for lightsabers. So that's section number one. But you can, or this is last thing, you can see the these here. So this is where the second section actually connects into the first section, and then you place the pin inside of it to actually hold it together. So again, it's is very well done. Uh, center section is mostly just the deck as well as the uh, smokestacks. But again, a lot more details. Uh, you can see the continuation of where what I think is the pool. Some more interior details, uh, tables, the passageways, so on and so forth. And on the back, it's a whole other set of details. See how this nice checkerboard pattern uh, on the deck tiles. Uh, some more passageways, you can see the, the bulkheads are different colors, so gray, white, brown. Um, some more tables and whatnot. Then you have these two spaces here. These are where actually the engines for the third section connect into. Something I do want to show on this one for some of the detail work. You can see all the different railings running along the side of the walkways. Then these pieces, these are benches. It's really neat how they did these because these actually you push it down in from the top. Um, but this is a really neat way to do benches. Um, they're done all up and down the sides of uh, both sections. Um, and then you can see them a lot on the rear section. Speaking of the rear section, sorry, the aft section. I shouldn't be saying rear. It's the aft. It's a ship. So here in the front, you have, again, the checkerboard patterns, which fits in with the other side. Um, you have the motors. You can see the detail of the motors. The motors actually piston up and down, which is a really neat detail. However, it was a giant pain in the butt put together, but it's still a neat detail. Um, again, at the top of the deck, you can see the lifeboats. You can see the, um, the benches. There's some more cargo cranes for the aftermost section of the ship, uh, back on the fantail. Um, they have this little gearing piece here. Uh, this is actually used to tighten up the string that runs across the top of the whole thing uh, when it's all together. Uh, a lot of neat detail on the after section of the ship. But, so you notice that I was spinning the motor, but when you spin the motor, it actually does spin the propeller. It's not very fast and it's not the greatest mechanism, but it works. And then they actually also added the detail of the rudder. If you notice, the rudder is actually uh, behind the middle screw, which allows it to turn more easily. That's the advantage of having a triple screw over a double screw. The screws being the number of uh, propellers that it has. And then you have this little walkway on the back end of the ship. Uh, the aft, it, aftermost mast. So that's a look at the interior. Now to tell you what I think. All right, so what do I actually think of this set? I'm going to give it a 9 out of a 10. Um, I originally heard about this set back, or rumors of it back in August. Um, they thought that it was going to be in the 12,000 piece range. 
Um, ended up being the 9,000, so still a pretty decent size uh, set. Um, it was officially announced in October. I think the pre-sales were in late October. Um, the pre-sales were sold out in under an hour. That's why it took me so long to get uh, to get a set. Um, it's really well constructed. Like I said, um, it's really uh, well done how they did actually holding the different sections together. The set is heavy, uh, which isn't to be it, which is to be expected, but it holds together very well, which is what really matters. I got a little errant piece over here from where I was taking it apart earlier. All right, get that back where it's supposed to be. Um, that being said, as well as Lego is at doing um, different mechanical functions, um, I have a lot of sets. The the hair or the the Avengers Helicarrier, um, the Ferris wheel, the carousel, um, the haunted house one. There's a lot of sets that uh, Lego has done very well with having motorized functions. And while I don't necessarily think this should be a motorized function set, the fact that I have to partially take it apart in order to just get the uh, propellers to turn is slightly annoying. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad per se, but it's more of an annoyance. I, I feel like uh, Lego easily could have put something um, here in disguise it or uh, somewhere else that would have allowed for uh, operating that function with the whole ship together. Um, another thing is, and it talks about it uh, when you're doing the, um, the actual build, in the area where the, the main engines are, there's actually a canister for the uh, electrical generation, which for me, I'm an electrician. Um, that's like my baby on a ship. Um, but it's kind of stuck in here and you can't actually see it. It doesn't turn, even though it, it when you build it, it feels like it should turn. Um, you can't see it, it doesn't really make any noise. So it was a lot of, um, a lot of work per se that doesn't actually come to anything. So I really feel like that possibly could have done a little bit better. Um, they could have had a functionality where you could turn all three uh, propellers at the same time. That kind of would have, would have, kind of would have been nice. Um, and there was something else. It'll call, probably come to me later. Um, really, those are more gripes than anything else. Uh, but I still think it's worth a 9 out of 10. Uh, the set was built very well. Um, it's definitely something if you have the money uh, to add to your collection. Um, I won't say that no collection will be empty without it, but uh, definitely something to add to it. Now I'm kind of aggravated myself with that. I couldn't remember what the other thing was. Oh, well. Probably not important. Um, hopefully you guys like this video. Um, my next one, uh, I just got the Hoth ATST set. Uh, so that is going to be my next build. Probably won't be a very long video because it's a pretty easy build, or it's a relatively small build, especially compared to this one, um, <laughs> considering how long this one took. Uh, this one ended up taking me about 14 hours all told once I actually looked at the, the different videos to see how long the set took. Uh, so uh, please remember to like, subscribe, uh, share. Um, the channel is growing slowly. Uh, and even if it just continues growing slowly, I'd like to see it continue growing. So hopefully we can keep going in that direction. Um, and just a shout out to a friend of mine's channel, Second Summit, and wearing their t-shirt. Uh, if you need somewhere to go for inspiration, talk about uh, working out, working. Um, they're big fans of people like Jocko Welnick and uh, David Goggins. A really interesting podcast uh, to listen to. Uh, another growing channel. Uh, made by a friend of mine, Dan Maycomber. So uh, I will see you guys next time.